So recently the band James World asked me to design an audience participation meter uh, for one of their shows. You can see all about that in the video in the link down below. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how to actually build an audience participation meter using Max MSP. To make this audience participation meter, we are going to use this technique called a leaky accumulator, which is a coding technique that stores values, but also over time those values start to leak out. So it's a really good way of tracking the overall energy of a thing. Okay, so to get started building an audience participation meter that uses this leaky accumulator technique, we need to track how loud the audience is being and we need to store those values in our accumulator. So to do that, we are going to create an easy ADC tilde, which is the audio input, it is a live, audio signal um, so it's going to be tracking the audience in real time and we need to get the max amplitude out of this live incoming audio signal so we're just going to attach our easy ADC object into a peak amp object and attach that into a float number box so we can see exactly what those values are uh, as they're coming in you can see now as I'm speaking kind of softly they're like low values and if I speak loud they kind of start to spike up um, so perfect, we're already tracking the overall volume of our audience, it's exactly what we need to be doing. Uh, now we just need to figure out a way to get this value to add to itself so it starts to accumulate. And the easiest way to do that is to use this float object box. It stores float values. If we just patch our amplitude value into the right inlet of that float object box, it's going to set it to be stored in this float object box um, and we can attach the output of it to this other float number box and we see that it's just storing those values nothing is getting output quite yet but we need to take this output of this stored value add it to this current value and then have that be the new stored float value so we're just going to create an addition object and say zero period so it knows uh, and understands float values and we're going to set the output of our float object box to be our right hand operant. Take the current amplitude value, add it to whatever this stored value is, and then have that be the new stored value. And bam, this little loop is going to start to accumulate values as soon as this inlet receives a bang. Um, and it's going to be really easy to do that. All we got to do is throw in a trigger object, which I'm going to uh, denote by typing T and then I'm going to type BF and uh, in case you don't know the trigger object works from right to left and it's order operations so if I patch this in right after our current amplitude value the value that is in this number box is going to come out of this outlet and then immediately after it's sent out of this outlet a bang uh, that's what this B stands for is going to be sent out of this outlet which we can patch into our float object box. And now we see that the value is already starting to accumulate very quickly. So we got our accumulation loop going just like that, super fast. Uh, now we need to make it leak. And that's really easy too. All you gotta do is throw a subtraction object in after our addition object. I'm gonna say just 0.4 kind of arbitrarily. Um, if we patch the output of the addition object in, to our subtraction object and then store that in our float object now we see that it's starting to lose values and it's awesome because not only does this subtraction object start to make it leak out its accumulated value over time but it doubles as a threshold this amplitude signal needs to be higher than 0.4 so that the difference between the two is what gets added. If it's less than 0.4, the difference between them is going to be negative and it's going to be subtracted. So that's how it works as a threshold as well. And we can just press the F key and patch in a float object box into that subtraction object box so that if we wanted to, we could adjust for how much it's leaking out and the threshold sensitivity. Um, you've noticed now that as I've been talking, our float object box has started to decrease into the negatives. That is not good. We don't want it to um, go below zero. So the easiest fix for that is just to add a clip object in between our loop and where how it's getting stored. So that way, uh, no matter what's going on, the final output of this loop can't go below zero because zero is the minimum value that's allowed to pass through here and be 
stored. So it's just going to stay resting at zero until it starts to spike up. Um, and if we talk fast enough and loud enough to eventually get this up to 100, it won't go past 100 either. Perfect. And the reason I chose between 0 and 100 is because that makes sense in terms of percentage. If you're like thinking from like 0 energy to 100% energy. And we're pretty much done right here. This is our leaky accumulator code. Just like that. So simple. That was so fast. Uh, really, the only other thing to do kind of is give it a nice graphical representation uh, something that is easier understood than just these float values. So I'm going to create a slider and then I'm going to press command I to open up the inspector and I'm going to change its range from 128 to 100 to match uh, our range of our clip. And once I patch that in, you can see now that the meter is starting to slide up as I'm talking. And if I really, really talked loud, it would jump up really high because there's a lot of energy in the room now. But I start speaking quietly again and it's starting to leak out. And bam, there you go. Just like that, we have a leaky accumulator. Um, I know that was super fast. Uh, I just wanted to show you how to do this. Maybe, you know, you didn't know how to do this before and this is a new technique, something very valuable. It could be used in a lot of different ways than just like engagement of like the audience. Um, totally a lot of different things you can use a leaky accumulator for. Uh, if something needs to be explained better, you want me to go more in depth about something I was talking about, please leave your questions and comments in the comments below uh, and I will be happy to address any anything that you may be thinking about. Uh, please also leave suggestions for future videos. Uh, I really want to make a lot of these tutorial videos and I want to do stuff that is helpful to people trying to learn Max MSP. Um, yeah, I have a lot of cool stuff I could show for sure. So just let me know what you want to learn about in the next video in the comments down below and I'll see you guys next time.